Good evening, everyone. So my name is Thomas Dinges. I work as development coordinator at Blender, and I have the pleasure again to host the lightning talks this evening. So we have uh, 14 presentations and 14 speakers, and you will see great Blender projects um, and things that you may or may not know already. So um, let's see. First of all, uh, how is your energy level after the second day of the conference? Are you energized? Awesome. Then, without further ado, let's get started. So, first of all, let's welcome um, Kajetan Kwasniewski on stage. I welcome you very dearly. I'm Kajetan Kwaśniewski. I am the founder of the Pollywood Animation. <laughs> Today, I want to show you one of my projects. It's a knowing fairy tale Red Riding Hood. Who knows this story? Red Riding Hood. Many people, yes, but in this story, Wolf is a Red Riding Hood who find the red coat, wear this, and going to the human village because want to discover these strange animals. But this creating conflict between humans and the walls. And I tell you how I prepare this project. Because first, what we must have is a good story. Seriously, we must have good story. And when we have good story, the second is, is creating sheets. We see facial sheets, but previously we must create Sheets, of course, is Grease Pencil, the best program to creating sheets characters. And first, what we do must, we must creating the basic poses, our character. But I don't mean the T-pose. No, not this basic pose. We must creating the basic pose when, uh, when you see only one second to this character, you know who is it. You know character, this character. You know it's a bold character or maybe the coward character. Have maybe energy or maybe not energy, introvertic, pathetic. You must know only one look. And of course, we're creating many, many characters to our animation, many sheets, facial sheets, uh, different poses, because when we have, uh, for, for example, one poses and the second poses and put on the blender, we only fill between these two different poses, front, back, angle, and of course, different expressions. I want to show you my latest animation, who I uh, use this method, and showed this movie in the Polish cinema to the festival. Please, with audio.
You can find me on the Facebook, and well, you can find me on the Facebook because I'm looking for you. I'm looking for people full of passion who want to create big projects. And this project, Red Riding Hood, it will be because it will be in the cinemas in Poland and maybe in the world. Thank you very much. Uh, can you turn back, please, to the um, Google Slides, because I don't see it on the uh, screen myself, so I cannot uh, change things. Thank you. All right, next up we have a um, video from Jeroen Bakker. Jeroen, do you want to come to stage as well? Yeah, sure. I'll start the... Uh, So I'll play the video from Jeroen. Morning, Oscar. <laughs> Did you sleep in the office? Oh yeah, right. The boss sent a video I had to watch. Falcon. No, I don't need a new system. The video is obviously fake. Think about it. These huge speed ups. That's just not realistic. Yeah, speak to you soon. Nobody gets between me and my cookies. <laughs> hey Oscar, when you go to the shop, can you buy some extra cookies? I feel a bit stressed today. Yeah. I did a thing, uh, but now I want you to do the thing. When Blender uh, 4.3 is, is, is released, I want you to uh, download it and try the Vulcan backend for one hour. If it works for, 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 for you, tell your friends on social media, whatever uh, you prefer. If it doesn't, report a bug, because that will make Blender better. Thank you. <laughs> All right, next we have uh, Nienke Helder and Josef Trojan. Welcome. standing here today because I am pretty sure almost all of us know what the male erection looks like. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I also think that the majority of all of us uh, have no idea what the female erection looks like. Um, 
Now, before you wonder what does this have to do with Blender, we will get there soon enough. Um, for the past four years, uh, I have been working on visualizing the female erectile tissue in collaboration with the University Hospital here in Amsterdam. Um, and this image right here is uh, one of my first attempts of creating uh, a visual of the clitoral complex. Um, and I think that most of you know it from that little round thing at the top, which is the only visible part uh, on the outside of the body. The rest of the organ is hidden inside the body. So that little round thing is essentially just the tip of the iceberg. My name is Nienke Helder and I work as a, a designer and researcher specialized in sexual and reproductive health. And uh, in our study about the female erectile tissue, um, we included 24 women who undergo an MRI scan um, where we aim to capture the volume increase of the clitoral tissue. Based on these MRI images, um, we will create the first ever anatomically correct and evidence-based animation of the clitoral complex um, uh, based on what uh, the clitoral erection looks like. So um, this is an animation of the clitoral complex becoming erect and it's a 15 minute interval uh, that is sped up. And this is where my blender friend Joseph comes in. Hi, I'm Joseph. Um, so you all saw the short animation. Let's play it one more time. It's a front view and top view. Yes, uh, over 15 minutes uh, in Blender in 3D. And if you go to next slide, this is how it's being created. There is a female laying in the MRI scan and uh, she's watching erotic content. The MRI scan scans her at 0, 5, 9, 12, and 15. I hope those times are correct. And of course, animation does not come out of this. We have to create the animation, and the data that we get out of the MRI scanners are either TIFF images or NII, basically coordinates uh, that the MRI spits out. We then go to the next slide where at the moment, we are using the TIFF images. We vectorize the TIFF images, and in the curves uh, in Blender, we shrink wrap a sub-D mesh. The sub-D mesh is specific for each patient, and therefore, we can then create a shape key animation. This is how it's done at the moment, but that's not why we are here. We are here because we think it can be done better, and asking all of you here, if you know how to automate it better, so if you know something about MRI scanners, if you know something about the NII format, about the coordinates, please come talk to us. If you know a bit more uh, about uh, the NII format, this would be, uh, this would be the most uh, welcomed help. And uh, as you saw on the animation, the textures are at the moment images. We would like to make them procedural so that they don't stretch. I think I said it all. Come talk to us here. We are still here tomorrow. Uh, you can always uh, send an email to Ninke Helder or Joseph Conceptcrafter. Please do. It's an exciting project. Oh, I should mention it's funded. There is some money involved, so <laughs> come <laughs> talk. Future generations will be thankful. All right, thanks a lot. Uh, the recording people were already afraid that we have to censor YouTube now because of this, but we're not recording the um, lightning session, so <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> um, all right, next up, there's um, Mathieu Einig. Welcome. Well, I get to say, it's quite a crowd and uh, whew, quite, quite anxious, I'd say. But anyway, my talk is going to be 
quite different from the uh, previous one, but <laughs> probably equally juicy if you're into the game development sort of stuff. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, for some people, it's quite exciting stuff. So you've probably uh, had to make assets before that you have to make low poly, high poly, bake everything, then make a special export mesh and keep track of all that stuff. And this is quite difficult to, uh, to handle. And you can see there, you, someone made a nice little plugin uh, a while ago that is a massive tick box of all the things you have to do. And uh, I don't like it. I mean, it's, it's a nice to have plugin, but like the, the workflow is just insane. Like you've got to make the mesh, you've got to then delete half of the mesh, you've got to duplicate everything, you've got to keep all the things in sync, and then when you're done, you can finally bake, then you realize you're wrong, so you start again, <laughs> then you get it right, and then your boss says, well, actually, I like it a little bit more round here, I'd like some objects to be bigger, and things like that, so you start again. And I, I don't think that's a nice workflow, so is there a nice solution? Yes. And hopefully, is gonna play. Oh, no, do I need to click on something? I don't even see my screen, which makes it... No, because I do not get anything here. Ah. So, <laughs> thank you. However, don't get too excited. There is no magic to it. You still have to do some of the work. Like what it does is a more like a, a non-destructive workflow for it. You still have to delete your edges, but instead of actually deleting them, you just tag them, say, I want them deleted later. And then you just have to click one button and you get your low poly, your high poly, your export mesh. So you still have some work to do, but you don't have to keep all the things in sync yourself, which I think is great. <laughs> like, th this is something that I've been using for a while, and it's been saving me a day of work every day. So I, I strongly recommend it to everyone. And the best thing is, it's entirely free. I put it on GitHub, so you can just have some fun. <laughs> So if you're interested, we can talk a bit about it, but I'll, you know, obviously I don't have that much time now. So you can find me somewhere. I'll probably be around the, uh, the cake somewhere in the, uh, in the canteen. So thank you. All right, thanks. And next up is uh, Eos Fox. Thank you. So, I'm back. Because if you remember, I was here already last year and I promised to be back with a new show. So, 
Everything you see, and I will tell you that probably a few times, was entirely done by volunteers. And we have no budget. But what is not entirely true is that we have no limits. So what we actually do is a live show for a convention with this year 5,200 attendees. attendees. And there's only one chance to fu not fuck it up. Um, so, most of us have a day job, and then we go home and open Blender again, and work on this show for almost an entire year. Um, and there, of course, are risks to that. So we have very little time, almost no budget, because we're getting actually our file server now funded. Um, but a super ambitious team, but also risk that someone drops out because as a rule for the team, we have, you can only join, only participate when your life is fine because this is an add-on. So just right away, um, topic was cyberpunk. So we had to make uh, a new outfit, outfit for our main character, Greeny, and she also got a new companion. And just right there, we're, that's the building of the characters. And we loved the 4.2 update on rendering of the fur. And we suddenly had actually full frame rate. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, then, normally, I have to limit my team and say, we can only do two characters, and one is not supposed to be a full character. And they're like, can we have an antagonist, an enemy? And I was like, nah. And I'm like, please. I'm like, nah. And we could do it with Geonodes. Maybe. <laughs> so that is what our technical artists came up with. And that is, how do I get the mouse to this? There we go. That is like the setup our technical artists came up with. Who dares trespass on my digital domain? I am the sentinel of security. The end. So you get the idea, and then later. Who dares yeah. trespass on my digital domain? Stop it. <laughs> Good. So what comes out in the end? And now to reboot your reference. Uh. Who dares trespass on my digital domain? I am the sentinel of security, the enigma of encryption, the code that cannot be cracked. I am the network lord of domains, and you shall not ask. Why? Come on. Next. So, um, we also are limited to have everything play in one room because there is no time for more environment or anything else, actually. So, this is our environment um, where everything is going on. If you have seen the last shows, they are all on YouTube, then you will recognize some of the items. So, we are like hiding trivia, trivia about the old shows every year again. And have you seen other talks already? If you have ever seen other talks already on the Blender conference, then we are not far away from actually working the same way as other studios. And since we're doing this for the fifth year now, we're also onboarding every year, like about two to three juniors. And we are also by now accepted as like works experience from uh, Germany and the UK. What is really, really nice. And we have just like an amazing um, storyboard artist. She has a major terminal to try and shut down me, network, lord of domains, and yep, 
That is exactly what I'm going to do. What? Ow! How is that even possible? With the power of creativity, anything is possible. Face it! Or should I say, deal with it. Take it away! So, and if you want to see more of this, there's actually a full <coughs> BTS, no, that's not the boy band, behind the scenes on YouTube that you can enjoy where we... Oh, sick! It. New combo! Got So... And Archie has a major terminal to try to shut down. No. <laughs> um, so, the, right now, the animation team, that is only, that this is only the number of the animation team because on stage, and we're working together with the stage team, we are with, um, like, there's something like a convention cone book where data is processed, whatever. So many, many teams behind the scenes. Thank you to them all. Um, and that is uh, but our active team. And you see we have two wonderful musicians as well. And, yeah, right now, 10 3D artists. And a lot of them do more than just one, so it was really hard to list. So, like, <coughs> three and a half animators, uh, modelers, lighting, and then someone does in between some grease pencil or whatever. It's very diverse, and we learn a lot. It's like our Blender boot camp for learning. Um, how do we do it? So, I got a bit of experience now, and other experienced people are coming up to me all the time and asking me, how do you do it? Like from studios or whatever. So very, very fast because I don't have time. Um, how do we do it? I don't think old fashioned top down management works for the creative field. I believe you need to be with your team, not above them. Creative people are the best when they feel safe and happy. Also, I believe you cannot make people be motiv motivated. They either are or they are not. You can only be positive about well checked and your work. When getting people into the team, I also ask myself, are they friendshaped? Because I genu and genuinely want to care about them. At work, you will have people that are mean and you need to get along, but free people will just leave. So caring about your team is very, very important. So to go on, it, we were overwhelmed with the good feedback, but now that is the last slide. Oh, there you are. Awesome. What can you possibly do? Repurpose an old arcade machine as a makeshift terminal to try and shut down the network, Lord of Domains. And yep, that is exactly what I'm going to do. Full swing. Ready, player one. I have a name. It's Greeny. Use it. We still got it. Welcome to Euroference 28. See you on the flip side. Thanks a lot. Um, I have to correct myself. Uh, this presentation is actually recorded like the others, so it will also be on YouTube. <laughs> All right, next up we have uh, Pierrick Picot. Please come to the stage. And uh, yeah, just a friendly reminder, you have a timer there. Uh, we still have nine presentations, so I really have to ask you to Stay on the time. So you can just. Uh, okay. You just need to talk to me on the arrow, right? Okay, cool. So, well, hello everyone. So I'm not here to talk about Noara, but to talk about a project that was made by the same team. So basically, um, 
Like a couple of months ago, some customers come to the studio and say, so we want to make a concept trailer for a fighting game. We don't have money, really. We don't have time either because it was for the 15th of October. And we don't really have a story. What do you think about that? And they were like, oh yeah, let's, let's do it. That's, that's, a good, that's a good one. So they called me. Um, the cool thing is that I had the project canceled, so I had time to jump on to this one. I just want to put the name first because we generally don't care about like the people afterwards. So this is the team like I used to work with on Noara at the time. Mostly friends, new junior guys, super awesome people. They are all super cool. I'd like also to take this opportunity to thank Pablo Fournier for his support during the production. <laughs> and Luciano Mino that is not there, but his problem. So yeah, let's go, basically. Thank you. Next up, we have uh, Gottfried Hofmann. Welcome. Hello and uh, welcome. I'm Gottfried Hofmann from Germany. That's a country right next to Netherlands where we currently are. And first thing, um, who's here from Germany? And who is from the north? Who's from the south? Who's undecided? <laughs> well, uh, for everybody else who's not from Germany, uh, Germany is like so many countries, it has a north and a south. And there's some differences to the north and the south. It's really weird. Like we have the Aldi supermarket, and in the north, it's all the north, and it's different from the south. Really weird. And so, Frederick is my colleague from Blender Diplom. He lives in the north in Berlin. I'm uh, Gottfried Hofmann from the south, from Bamberg. And we went on to find out whether there is uh, different blenders in Germany in the north and the south. So first we went to the north. And we went looking for blender. And, <laughs> and we found it. <laughs> and if you take a look at this, uh, the sign, it's so high because I, it, it, it gets stolen all the time. The, the people there, the locals told us it gets all this time stolen. But if you look around a bit, you will find another sign that's not so high, so you can even climb it. And um, <laughs> that one actually probably got stolen because the year before it was all um, green from all the um, dirt. And uh, this year it was really clean, so somebody probably took it. <laughs> Anyways, um, we went to look a little further because when Blender changed from left click select to right click select, my joint here started to hurt, so I needed some physiotherapy. And. <laughs> And now, this was the Blender in the North. Let's take the Blender Tour and... The Blender, the blender Tour goes from Blender to Blender by cycles. <laughs> You can see Blender in the north is um, almost at sea level, while Blender in the south is a little higher. 
And you can see it takes about uh, 40 minutes using cycles. You, it's a, <laughs> hmm? uh, EVs, EVs called motorcycles. It's about eight hours. So you can see that the steepness of this trip, as, it, as I said, it's from Blender to Blender, actually coincidentally resembles the Blender learning curve. After reading this great book on our 40-hour trip by cycles, we put the cycles away and we continue on foot on the Blender way, which leads upwards a mountain. It goes up, and the mountain is called the Blender. So this is the Blender in the south, and this is the Blender in the south. And I think you already saw it, but who saw it? I think somebody saw it, but maybe everybody else will see it now, and it's really cool because Blender is over 1,000! <laughs> and uh, you see here that here I'm up here uh, almost all alone, so that wasn't so nice, and that's why we decided to go up there again. Save the date. 24th of May 25, we're going to scale the blender. <laughs> so, I think we can stick to the next, we can switch. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever saw a talk two years ago knows I tried to use AI to improve Blender and I had the AI paint images hoping that the image would be able to somehow improve, well, everything. Because, you know, AIs are smart. So um, that didn't work out so well, but um, we decided to make the second half of the talk um, to show you some images of the AI. And if you want an image from an AI, you need to tell it what to uh, write, uh, paint, and that is called a prompt. So for example, if you look at this image, um, many of you might think the prompt was Blender, but that's only partially correct. We're an international po uh, audience, so that was the prompt. <laughs> so, and now you're invited to guess the prompt. <laughs> Next one might be easier now that you know the topic. Elephant's dream, exactly. And this one I really think came out well. Hmm? That would be glass half, exactly. Next one, I'm surprised it even captured the style to an extent. That's coffee run, exactly. And I think this is the final in our movie category. Tears of Steel, exactly. So after I did this, I thought, well, AI has gotten a lot better since last time we used it, so maybe we can ask it another question. So uh, I tried, let's see what it tells us to import BPY, and the result was this. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure if they just don't want to help me out or if BPY is something dirty and I don't know it. I, <laughs> I went on Wikipedia, the only thing I could find it was an abbreviation for a language that hardly anybody speaks anymore. Maybe importing that language would be, I don't know, something bad. Okay, so, still, uh, so now we're in the, the category is Blender Interface. Who can guess what this is? The next one might be easy, but I'm not entirely sure. That's the make it beautiful button. 
And this one is um, not so much a, a from the Bender interface, it's more of a model, which would be <laughs> a good combination of all of them. Let's see the next one. This one should, this is so easy, it probably doesn't need any introduction, right? Just for comparison, this is what it drew. I'm still not sure what it is, but I like it. <laughs> and this, of course, is the first paragraph from the Wikipedia page of Blender. So, this one looks like we're back to the movie categories. If you think it's just Cosmos Laundromat, well, that's, of course, part of it, but I think it's a very important message, at least to me. So if, anybody's what, so if anybody who's in charge is watching, please uh, listen to this message. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, next up uh, we have uh, Aman Pret. Welcome. Actually, I have a confession. So you, I see all the awesome people here and awesome work they all do. I'm not that awesome. I always, whenever I come here, I always think why I'm here. Like I don't even belong here because I'm not that awesome. I'm an artist, but I'm not a great artist or best artist, if you can say. I'm an average. I mostly call myself jack of all trade. But I have one thing the will to do something. So I keep trying, keep trying, until I get to do something. So that's what I came here to share, art of keep trying. That's basically, I will quickly go through my journey as an artist till now and how I am standing here and getting lovely wishes from all you guys. So it all started back in 2014 and 16, when I didn't know I wanted to do art. Right? I didn't even know uh, there was a 3D. I just knew Photoshop, you can morph your photo on top of someone else and show off to your friends, so that I knew. But then <laughs> I learned 3D, I learned Max, and I did some architecture, some ads, some random stuff I did. But soon I realized I had to find out something, I have to do something, one thing, which I would love to do. So I picked games. Right. So after trying for months, after rejection after rejection, I got one. So that was the second phase of my life. When a clueless artist, right, I didn't know anything about games at that point. So I was ready to learn. So I got one opportunity, one job, and I learned, I learned, I learned. So when I entered the studio, I didn't know anything. Every day I went there to think they're gonna fire me today, they're gonna fire me today, <laughs> they're gonna fire me today. So because every evening they said, where is the work? Where is the work? Why is it not finished yet? Why is it not finished yet? So one day they asked me, what happened? Do you have a breakup? Anyone is not well in your family? What is wrong? I said, I don't know anything. I don't know how to do. So they, <laughs> oh, that's the problem. So they said, so I said, teach me. You can teach me anything. So I started learning, started learning. So whoever I see on the screen they are doing, I ask them, teach me what you are doing. So I learned for two years. So I made a realization after two years. So when I entered the company, 
I saw all these awesome people doing awesome stuff on the screen. So after two years of learning, I saw they are on the same stage. Like they are not growing, right? And they don't have anything now that they can teach me. I'm not being arrogant or uh, demeaning them. Just basically, I wanted to grow a lot more than I could get from that place. So that's what I'm saying, just grow. Just hold on to the place while you can learn from it and then just move on once you have nothing more from that place. So I decided to leave. So before that, I started learning Blender because I, I hated it like everybody else before when it was 2.79 because of the UI. That's the only thing that was keeping me away. But when the beta released or alpha released, I tried it and I learned it. So I started doing it and I got so many projects because of Blender. And I made portfolio, I learned, and I got opportunity to work in Czech Republic for a big AAA game studio. Yeah, so it might be a very small thing for European guys or for the Western guys, for whom someone from Asia, from a small town, it was a very big thing. So I came here, and that's when my life changed. I'm standing here because I came to Czech Republic. I met these guys from Blender Kit. I met Willem. So because of him, I'm coming to Blender. Because of him, I got more opportunity to work with the Blender and uh, learn our more thing. And one more thing, I met my wife because of Blender. <laughs> Again, if you think I haven't achieved anything significant with Blender, I only do modeling and unwrapping with Blender, if I say. I know basic of mostly everything in there, but I'm not as awesome as you guys. But the one thing I did, I will keep trying to do some things with, with it until I make something. So after doing the jobs, I knew I wanted to do something else. So I started teaching after quitting my job. So I taught Blender, I teach Blender and game art, and, and I wanted to do something. So I started doing, uh, making a project with volunteer with my students. So I'm building some games and projects. As I don't have time, I will just run back. <laughs> so tomorrow we have a talk in the classroom, so we'll see you all there. And I have a small studio called FPC, which is basically my students, we're building a game. So if you guys have some experience, you would like to help me do things, or if you are a junior who want to learn game art, I will teach you in the return of the help you will give me. Or if you have friends who want to learn Blender and game art, come, uh, send them my way. I will help them to learn everything and find them job in the industry, uh, in the stage of if they help me. So <laughs> that's it. Thank you very much for everything. Thank you. So next up is um, Adam. Yeah. Welcome. Hello. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Adam and I'm a musician turned 3D artist turned developer. In my journey, um, I have found the need to synchronize music and visuals together to, for concerts or music videos, that kind of thing. And I found the, the existing tools uh, lacking in some ways to do what I wanted. Um, so I developed an add-on called GeoMIDI. Uh, and it's an importer, it imports MIDI, which is, um, it's not audio, it's really just the data of uh, like the notes and the modulation happening. So it's really more like, uh, like an XML or an SVG compared to like raster. Um, so I made a file format uh, so Blender could read, uh, it's a plain text file format. Um, and it's an importer, really, is all the tool does at this point um, for importing and converting uh, 
uh, continuous control channels of automation and modulation from a MIDI file and turning those into keyframes um, and F curves. And the workflow begins in a digital audio workstation rather than in Blender and you export a MIDI file, bring it into Blender and then uh, it keyframes out everything automatically for you. So on the left, that's Ableton Live. It's the digital audio workstation I use. And um, there on the right is that same data imported into Blender. Uh, it calculates the tempo of the music and synchronizes everything. And uh, I made it for use with geometry nodes, but it works with drivers or anywhere you want to drive something in Blender. So here's a little demo. So all those uh, tracks at the top are various audio and uh, digital instruments. And then in a single MIDI clip down at the bottom, um, I have six channels in this case of uh, automation um, that corresponds to various parts of the, the music. And then so you export that clip as a MIDI file. MIDI is a open standard, so it's a, uh... yeah, okay. And then so here is the conversion utility that I made uh, to convert it from a MIDI file into a GMID file, which is really just a plain text file with a GMID extension. And so once you have your GMID file, go into Blender and with the GeoMIDI add-on, um, Set your tempo before you import it, right there in the little menu. Bring in your file, and then what it does is it creates an object, just a single vertex for each of the channels. So in this case, it made six. And there now is all the data that was in the Ableton session is now here in Blender. And um, that's the Y position of each of those vertex has been keyframed uh, in the timeline now in Blender. So I made a, a simple little example. Yeah, so I, I'm hoping to get some extra cool features added to it. Um, if there's any Python wizards out there who want to help me uh, bundle the dependencies, I use a third-party library for the decoding of the binary MIDI. And it, I would really like for that to all be just in one bundle so it can be on the extensions platform at some point and uh, just a little more streamlined. So yeah, thank you very much. All right, thank you. And next up we have uh, Boris. Welcome, Boris. Hi everyone, um, unfortunately I don't have a presentation so it's going to be the, the website. Um, I'm Boris from Orbit Studio, I'm here with Emilien, our node specialist. Um, and I just wanted to uh, share that we have the studio working fully on Blender um, and that we are always looking for um, 
Blender artists and wizards. So we're going to be here until tomorrow. If you want to um, uh, come see us, um, we're, so we're all doing everything on Blender except compositing that we're doing on Fusion and After Effects. And Emilia is working hard to convince me to switch to, to doing compositing also in Blender, <laughs> which I think is a good idea. Um, and yeah, otherwise you can uh, contact us. Uh, I don't have the QR code like everyone, unfortunately. Uh, but um, orbit.studio, pretty easy. And um, yeah, hope to see you soon. Thanks. So next up, we are going to travel to uh, Los Angeles and have Jason van Gamster and Amber Kelly talk about the LA conference. Hi. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> I know. I'm Amber. This is Jason. Everyone knows him. He's giving me credibility right now. <laughs> So I am here to talk about a little thing that happened in the U.S. of A. back in April. Who here is from the U.S.? Yay. Hey! Almost as many people as Germany. Um, <laughs> that's cool. So, yeah, about yeah, three years ago at this conference, right about the time that we were uh, doing the photo booth, I heard Tan say to Wes, uh, can I announce that you're going to do a U.S. conference next year? And Wes said, no. Um, and then that you saw was the wee hours of the morning of just last year when we finally did say yes. <laughs> or in other words, I said yes and then immediately regretted my life choices. Um, so <laughs> it was a lot of work. This conference is a lot of work, you guys. You have no idea. Um, and I didn't either, but it was so well worth it. We had tons of people show up. Um, there they are. Look at all those happy faces waiting to get in, standing on the Hollywood stars right there. Um, beyond all of the lovely people that we had show up, we had great vendors and sponsors. Two of them are sponsors this year of this Beacon. That's Otoy and Linkage. So big ups to them. We had a ton of help from Francesco and from Tan, and one of the reasons that they wanted to do this in the United States is because this conference is so packed every year that we want to expand this to other people can, who can do it everywhere. And as part of doing this, we created something called Beacon Everywhere, which is kind of a guidebook. If you want to do your own Beacon wherever you are, so far nobody else is doing that. I don't blame you, um, but you should consider it um, so that one of the reasons we wanted it in the U.S. is there are a lot of Blender users in the U.S., but not a lot of them that can make it out here. So one of the first things I did is ask who had never been to a Blender conference before in the past, and most people raised their hands. And so that felt like a huge accomplishment. Um, yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> See? <laughs> you can tell. Is that you? Hey, there you are! <laughs> So yeah, here you see some of our, we had some great speakers, we had some great sponsors, um, and we also recorded Denoise Season 2, which was hosted by Jonathan Lampell and Kent Schimmel live, and it is available now. You should listen to it wherever you are. Yeah, there it is. That's what it looks like. Like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Um, also, everybody loved it, and it was a great success, even this guy. <laughs> there he is, he's doing it again. See, he just got to sit there and he did nothing. All he did was sit back and enjoy the show and take photos with everyone and it was awesome. So, the reason that he got to do that is because it was hosted by us, Autotroph. It's the first officially recognized Blender conference outside of this one. We greatly appreciate the trust and the help that they gave to us to make that happen. Um, so I was organizing it with a lot of help from Jason Van Gumster, also from Autotroph, which is run by Wes Burke and Jonathan Williamson. And now I'm going to hand this over to Jason. So even in the event 
this, this question got asked. And the answer that Amber kept giving was? We'd love to. <laughs> she never specified when. And uh, then she did that. She kept doing that. And so I have cajoled some folks into possibly doing it again. Woo! Not in LA. <laughs> so it's going to be in North America. Uh, and, but uh, yeah, that's the, that's the plan. We're, we're going to do it again. And I get to be the person that gets to be freaked out. And we haven't figured out the venue just yet. Uh, but it's not going to be cold because I don't want it to be cold because cold sucks. <laughs> Sorry, Amsterdam. Uh, <laughs> so actually, hold on. We've, I've got two choices right now. And really, this is not going to affect my decision because really it's which place is going to give me a venue that costs right. But right now, it's two choices. One is Austin, Texas. The other one is Atlanta, Georgia. So. So we have a very specific set of people who are loud about it. I'm not surprised, Texas. But if you really want it there, come see me. We'll see what we can do about organizing it. Where are we going to be? We're going to be at a table tomorrow. Upstairs and or downstairs, upstairs in the marketplace. So come find me, Amber, Autotrope sign. We'll be there. All right, thanks. Now we have uh, Thomas Radeke talking about pixel art and Blender. So for enough, now for something completely different. Uh, you might have seen me walking around with this thing here. Um, oh yeah, I have to switch slides myself. <laughs> so yeah, my name, my name is Thomas Radeke. This is my second talk today. <laughs> and uh, thank you. And um, yeah, you, you might have seen me Walk around, walking around like this. This thing is usually attached to my backpack. And you might have been wondering what that is. And I've uh, actually been asked uh, about this thing a lot yesterday. So I decided to make a, a spontaneous uh, lightning talk about it. And uh, this thing is called a uh, Devoom Pixu. Uh, it's, a, it's a dedicated pixel art display with 32 by 32 pixels resolution. It's a completely commercial device. You can just buy it off of Amazon or their original website. So this, no, I'm not sponsored. I'm just a big fan of pixel art. And uh, I like it so much, I actually have two of them. <laughs> uh, one of them is uh, just 16 by 16 pixels resolution, but I like the um, creative freedom with 32 by 32 pixels a little bit more. And um, I liked it so much that I decided I want to be able to showcase that thing on uh, public events. And so I 3D printed a frame um, and uh, slotted that in. And uh, now I was able to just carry that thing around all day. And I'm actually pretty surprised the battery life is uh, extremely long. So I could run that thing for the entire day and the battery would just uh, drop down to like half. <laughs> and um, now uh, let's talk a little bit of, uh, about the things that are on here because I made all these animations myself. And uh, uh, I'm using a, an application called Pixelorama, which is free and open source software. You might, you might have heard that idea from somewhere. And uh, this is what it looks like, basically. So yeah, this is also one of the animations I made recently. And I also made a time-lapse video about how I did this, links at the end. And um, I tried a little bit uh, with animations on this thing and also the Blender logo, as you can see. I really like the pixelated look of that. So I made a set of Blender-themed animations. And these are uh, the ones on the top are all handmade, hand-drawn. And the one with the axis on the bottom is also completely hand-drawn, um, while the others are actually rendered directly from Blender. And um, OK, I'm, uh, I left out a little, little detail. The very first one on the, on the top left um, had a little bit help from Blender. I actually rendered the rotating cube and then painted over it. And uh, whoops, this is, this is another set of, uh, of animations that I made uh, for Halloween. 
uh, basically. And there, there's also, there's actually two animations in here that have had help from Blender. That is the, the Witch's Cauldron, which was an entire 3D scene, actually. Uh, completely animated and, and made in, in Blender, and then rendered in a very, very low resolution, 32 by 32. And um, I painted over it, uh, smoothed out the pixels, um, changed the, the color palette. And uh, the ghost on the other side was actually a cloth simulation. That's a, actually a sphere moving in an, uh, a pattern eight um, with a cloth on top. And um, then again, I, ex I rendered that and exported that and, um, and painted over it, and gave it eyes, and so it became a little ghost from cloth simulation. And um, the title said, uh, Pixel uh, Blender and Pixel Art and some weird experiments. Now for the weird part. Um, I did an experiment where I tried loading up uh, a sprite sheet in Blender and rendered that, hoping to get uh, like a perf pixel perfect animation of things moving very smoothly because um, doing all that by hand is pretty tedious. And um, so as you can see here, this is a screenshot from a scene that, um, that I made. The, the sprites already existed for that, but I, uh, I loaded them up into, uh, onto planes I set up the uh, resolution of the entire scene and matched up the, um, the pixel size and so on. And uh, there, there's a, a fun thing I found out. That is, if you match up the resolution of your scene and um, set the texture interpolation of such a plane to uh, next neighbor, you can actually get pixel perfect transitions that is directly rendered from Blender. There's no blending in there in between the pixels, no anti-aliasing. And that, that is the direct output from Lenner and that nothing edited or something. That's so I, I really like that. <laughs> but wait, it gets weirder. <clears throat> I actually managed to make a compositing node setup that sets up one bit dithering. Uh, it works in real time. And um, because I, I, like, I like the retro aesthetic very much and I tried to do that directly inside of Blender. I also tried doing something with palettes but, but introducing the concept of palettes into the compositing editor was uh, pretty much impossible right now. Um, so I left it at that. Okay, no, I lied. I didn't left it at that. I actually experimented a little bit more <laughs> and implemented uh, two-bit dithering per color. That means uh, four brightnesses uh, for red, green, and blue, and then blend it all together. Um, and I ended up with a pretty retro looking, uh, dithering look, which um, as the other one runs real time in the compositor if you enable uh, viewport compositing. And now for the we weirdest part of the entire thing, uh, this entire presentation uh, was actually made in my hotel room on a Steam Deck. <laughs> So if you, if you want to see more of uh, whatever I'm up to, um, I've got an Instagram. Uh, I, I mentioned the uh, ghost uh, video um, on my YouTube. And also, if you, if you happen to own one of these, or if you're, you're planning on buying one of these, I have actually reverse engineered the Bluetooth protocol of this thing. Um, because the official way of the manufacturer to connect to this thing is through their app. And their app requires not only an internet connection, but also a login with their services. And that means if they ever go out of business or decide not to support this thing anymore, you're out of luck. Uh, not anymore. <laughs> I wrote a little application that I'm going to upload on GitHub very soon. I still have to clean up the code a bit. However, it allows you to upload GIFs directly to the internal storage of this device. And uh, yeah, so I hope you're having fun with this then for a little bit longer than the um, original manufacturer intended. <laughs> Thanks very much. Have a nice evening. All right, uh, we're going to have one more presentation by Tim Tan. He will speak about uh, promoting Blender in China. Hello, everyone. 
Um, I'm Tim from Crystal Institute. We're based in Hong Kong. Last year, I was the first presentation. I get to be last this time. Um, so I have three projects that I want to share with everyone uh, because we love Blender and open source a lot, so we are always finding ways to promote it. The first project is actually something that we promoted last year, uh, which is the Blender Studio platform in China. I'm going to do this freestyle. I don't need this. Yeah. <laughs> so we've translated everything on the Blender Studio platform into Chinese. I swear. I swear. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. So here's kind of what it looks like. UI, everything in Chinese. Yeah. Trust me, it's, it's all correct. It's all up there. Um, we did all the films. We did all the blogs. So if you can read Chinese, please feel free. Uh, it's also available in English on the same site. So feel free to take a look. Here's a quick demo. Oof. Well, I'll send the video to everyone afterwards. Um, but it's a very intuitive video player, right? You can just switch language, and you can hear all the videos like Anglerfish in Chinese. So we're hoping to do this with more languages in the future. Cool. All right, um, getting more and more ambitious. It's in increasing magnitude. Um, because we love Blender so much, we think we should teach it to more and more people. So our limit right now is from eight-year-old eight-year-olds to 68-year-olds. So here are some kids that we taught Blender to. I'll let the work speak for itself. So. Thank you. Um, so a bit of background. These were teams of around three to four students. And their average age is around 8 to 12 years old. And we gave them around 10 hours of class time to work on this. And um, I'll show another one. Um, no pandas were harmed in the making of this video, I swear. Uh, rigging was unfortunately something we couldn't teach. But we taught them texture painting for all the uh, facial expressions. We taught them lighting, environment. Uh, keyframing, rendering, all the likes. Um, it's a very express course, and we did it, uh, did a lot of it for free, right? Some of it was paid by schools, and we're hoping this will help us promote Blender to more people. And we also teach to adults. Um, these are more intensive programs, um, paid for by the Hong Kong government, thank you. And um, these are three-month programs, so a bit more time spent on these projects. Uh, they have, most of them have no experience with 3D or Blender, and they're coming in fresh, and they spend lots of sleepless nights making these weird videos. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that was supposed to be a coffee bean, Yeah, just for reference. All right, um, so we want to share our experience and resources with everyone. So we're starting an alliance of Blender educators. We're already doing a lot um, at the, since the last year's Blender Educator SIG. Uh, we're meeting again tomorrow morning. So if you're interested in learning about how we teach Blender, uh, please come by. All right. The third and most, the QR codes are, will be back later, don't worry. Um, so the third and most challenging aspect, I think, is connecting the Blender community. Uh, there's lots of Blender users in China, uh, but how do we get them all together? Um, so answering the challenge posed by Jason and Amber earlier, we're going to do a Blender day to begin with. So we're going to start small. It's going to be a one-day event coming up in one month, less than one month. And yes, it is a lot of work. Um, but we're getting people all over China to come join us. This is the roster so far, and the list is still growing. So if you guys have any friends in China that are using Blender, you know, refer them to us. Uh, we're going to be at the booth uh, upstairs in the market tomorrow. And uh, if you want an excuse to come to Shenzhen and meet with us, please come by. Um, we're going to make the tickets even cheaper than they are right now uh, to make, uh, because it's the first year. We just want to make sure that the community can be there and we want to celebrate Blender in China, right? So come by if you want to have a vacation. It's warm too, All right? So yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
right, thanks everyone. It's been a pleasure to host the Lightning Talks again. Hope to see you guys next year. But before running out, we are now having the Susanna Awards with Fiona and later this evening, of course, the live music here. So um, yeah, enjoy the evening and see you next year. Super heavy. I don't know what we did this year, but uh, look at those boxes, right? <laughs> um, so, welcome to the Suzanne Awards, still marked animation festival, because I'm here to do the talking, obviously. <laughs> uh, it's always a great time watching all of the projects that have been done with Blender. And you know, at the studio, especially at the studio, Bo made a whole lot of work doing the selection. So, <laughs> I want to give that up. And we were all wondering, what was done with Blender? Was everything done with Blender? How did they do this? How did they do that? So, you know, it goes both ways, basically. Um, I want to thank everyone who has submitted anything first, because you did something, you wanted to put it out there. So, we should give a round of applause also to the ones that, wasn't, that were not selected. <laughs> And of course, thank you to everyone who voted, because without the votes, there's no award. Um, so without further ado, let's give it for the Suzanne Awards. And for best design, I make the envelopes, but still. It's Catwalk by Lydia Luna. Tony Mortero and Omera Gonzalez. If they can, oh, Tony is here. I mean, yes, Tony is here. <laughs> Hi, Tony. Are you the only one here? Sorry? Are you the only one from your team? Yeah, yeah. I am the only one. Here. Then I present you with this oh, beautiful wow. Suzanne. Very heavy. <laughs> Go ahead. A lot of <laughs> That's beautiful. I have to talk or something. You can say a few words, yeah, about cat or I cat don't know what to say, but thank you so much. Give me a box. I mean, I love cats. I'm wearing one in my hair right now. But uh, did not mess with the votes at all, I promise. And then for the next award, which is for best animation. Yes, lots of suspense over here. <laughs> well, it is Solo, Mundo Cannibal. <laughs> Tony again. <laughs> so come on. <laughs> I don't have anything to say either. <laughs> enough space on your shelves that's that's the thing you're gonna have to share yeah, with the team no you right? have had the strength for both for <laughs> carrying both well you have enough boxes at least yeah, thank you i it's carry the, you. the box too. yeah so that you can put the second one yeah. but congrats yeah. and thank you. i want to say uh that we had a little issue with the talk yesterday right yeah yeah, yeah. but you're gonna be redoing part of it all of it all, all of it all of it all of it tomorrow so that's going to be in the theater as well at 4.30. So make sure to check it out, because he's going to be talking about this short, especially. Yeah. 
Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> And again, that was not rigged to, you know, apologize for the technical issues, nothing like this. And this one is about a mouse, so nothing to do with me. Um, and the last prize of the night, which is for the best short film. Yeah. That's going to be for Koji by Robbie McFadzin and Glenn Johnston. Come on, welcome. Hello. Here you go. So you are Glenn. Yeah, I'm, I'm Glenn. <laughs> I'm Glenn, uh, and this is uh, part of the team from Ammonite. Uh, and thanks to the rest of the team that couldn't make it, and thanks to everyone that voted. Oh, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, oh my god. That's, that's your Suzanne, eh? So many people. <laughs> yeah. Like you don't realize it from there. Eh? But they all look good, right? Yeah. I mean. Very important. They voted for you. <laughs> But congrats for the best short. Uh, that was a very violent, but also a lot of tension on that short. Is there going to be a follow-up, or you're moving on to something different? Don't promise anything, man. I... <laughs> <laughs> Word to the wise. Uh, yeah, I'll take a check. I'll say, I, I would love to. And then slowly yeah. slide off stage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wink, wink to the producers in the room. <laughs> yeah. oh, thank you so much. Thank And it is, I think, the first time, not not, yeah, that we have all of the winners in the room that we can give the Suzanne directly. So thank you for coming, for making the trip from all of your countries, all of your cities, um, and to finish those Suzanne Awards. Wink to the balcony. Um, I want to thank you again for joining, for participating, but most of all for making things with Blender. And until next year and the next season awards, keep creating. Woo!